Previously on Hey It's JK. I was getting to the point where I was miserable on making videos. You get burnt out so quickly in order to meet the demands of the YouTube algorithm. And it's not a good idea to get caught up with numbers. It feels good to be back and alive. Hello everyone, it's Jay. And you know what I love more than anything? Early 2000s pop punk music. Just kidding, that was a f***ing bop. That was a bop. Today we're going to be looking at a movie called Joe C and the Pussycats. And no, not the cartoon, which was way better. Or the Scooby-Doo impression. You're gonna do what I want you to. The actual movie that came out in the early 2000s. Now, I grew up on punk rock music whenever I was really little. And this movie is no exception to all the punk rock scene that happened in that time period. It has stars like Rachel Lee Cook, Rosario Dawson, Tara Reid, and Alan Cumming. Oh, and I can't forget... Parker Posey. These actresses and actors made this movie very fun growing up. So was this movie terrible and what made it terrible? Get it? It's the title of my video. Well, let's just dive into the movie and find out for ourselves if it's bad or if it was actually a good movie. So if you happen to like my content, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and let's get started. The movie starts out with a boy band called De Jour, basically mocking all the bands of this time period. Bands like NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, and Boys to Men. But clearly, this group cannot sing like they can. But it was very interesting to see Seth Green as one of the members of the group. After all the obnoxious screaming and crying over the boy band, I guess to mimic teenage girls crying over like NSYNC and Backstreet boys from back in the day. We get to see the boy band board a plane, but during flight, the boy band continuously fight over who is better and who does what. Now, I guess this is to mimic the boy bands of this time period, which I don't recall any boy band actually fighting like this, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I was just too young. We then get introduced to the manager named Wyatt, who is played by Alan Cumming. This man is very underrated, I might add, and I strongly, strongly love his acting career. He played in movies like Spy Kids and I love those movies growing up and one reason was because of him. I just love his acting. While in flight, the group get Wyatt, the manager, to listen to their new remix which has some mysterious background noises in the track. They were trying to figure out what those noises could be and why they were put there. Yo, we were like working on some remixes of the, of the last single, right? And we heard like a really strange background track and, and we were wondering whether or not you knew what it was all about. After the boy band caught wind of what was going on, Wyatt then decides to just jump out of the plane, leaving the boy band to die in the plane. Yeah, you heard me right. They literally killed the boy band because they were catching on to what was going on behind the scenes. Sounds a little fishy. Take the Chevy to the living. Also, we're not even five minutes into the movie and there's like product placement and advertising everywhere. It's insane in this movie how far it goes. Like here and here and here. So after he kills the group, literally, the manager goes on a search for the next pop star group. Finally, we get to the actual point of the movie the punk rock music this movie came out around the pop punk era so of course it's gonna have punk montages during this montage they introduce the main characters of the movie and have really interesting scenes <laughs> After the song ends, it snaps back to reality to them not really being noticed. Get it? Because we all start off in a sh position. By the way, yes, there are headphones on my f***ing head. Also, can I just point out that this montage is the longest montage in movie history? Like, this movie is so full of montages. It's like, I don't know, 30 to 40 minutes of montages. It's insane. After that, we jump to the girls living on a budget and eating ramen because, get it, we start out in a sh position. Then we get introduced to their manager, which is honestly the worst manager possible. This manager can't even make it to their shows. Like, come on, dude, you can be better than that. During the altercation between the group and the manager, we start to see the anti-feministic jokes that are in this movie. One example would be that the writer thinks that blondes are stupid and makes Melody Tara Reed do this. I could be here and in there. And I could be in the living room. And in the family room and over here. 
That's not good, man. Can I also add that their kitchen is god awful ugly? Like these fucking cabinets are so gross. I hate it. Oh look, more advertising. <sighs> Thank God that's over. In the next scene, we stumble upon DeJore's manager, aka Wyatt, still looking for a new group to sign. He goes to the music store in the mall and gives the DJ his card, which the DJ did not care for. I saw the card, man, but I missed everything else. But the manager then gives the DJ the newest single of DeJore to see what the people would think. And that's when we get to the plot of the movie, which is that music makes us mindless slaves. Try saying that three times fast. That was really hard get it because hashtag as it plays out he sees all the customers agree that it is a bop all but one which believes that i think that song sucks i plug my ears when crap like that comes on and that people are mindless drones who will gobble up anything you tell them is cool the manager then says he would love her opinion to see what they are doing wrong then we see her just disappear into a van that's some really big conspiracy theory right there that's that's a little bit too far oh look it's mtv.com finally we get to the part that we all have been waiting for because i can't tell you how happy i am to be sitting at this table with the pussy hats during this scene, the girls are outside a clothing store about to play, but get escorted off the property by the manager of the store who then calls the cops because they would not leave. Meanwhile, the manager of Mega Records is driving around still looking for the next band while on a time crunch. The cops show up to the clothing store and the girls book it only to almost get ran over by the shady record label manager. He then has an epiphany towards the girls that he almost literally f and it then cuts to a scene of them at a cafe where he presents a contract to join the record label. You want to sign us? I mean, you've never even heard us play. To be honest, this does happen a lot in the music industry and the artists cannot get out of the label at that point because they just sign a contract wanting to be famous and get money. But hey, that's fame for you. Hey guys, you know how people always say that this is the life? I think this is what they say. Private plane. Record deal. Coasters. And oh look, more advertising. Cue the wardrobe montage. I don't know what it is about this era and pop punk montages, but I like it. Some of the songs are f***ing bops. Josie and the Pussycats finally get to see themselves on a billboard. Still haven't even recorded anything, by the way. In the next scene, we get to meet the CEO of the record label, which has some questionable moments. Ever wonder why so many rock stars die in plane crashes? Overdose on drugs? Fiona, played by Parker Posey, who also played in one of my favorite films called Blade Trinity. Super awesome movie i love that movie presents what the record label is actually trying to do which is enslave the masses get it hashtag i love the scene of her wiping the cocaine off her desk that really should not be in a movie that is rated pg-13 but i don't know maybe 13 year olds back then were just so into the sh i don't know anyways after she takes the u.s military and some quote-unquote foreigners. foreigners that's pretty racist there to her head operation she shows everyone how powerful music is by presenting a short educational movie you see for years the government has been wisely coercing teenagers to buy products they normally wouldn't want just to get their money fact kids don't have bills to pay fact they don't pay taxes but they do babysit and hold minimum wage jobs that earn them wads of cash as thick as, well, my body of work. But these kids today aren't dumb. That's why the government has been planning small subliminal advertising suggestions in today's rock music. The results? We can now get these kids to buy just about anything. We can have them chasing a new trend every week. And that is good for the economy. And what's good for the economy is good for the country. So God bless the United States of America, the most ass-kicking country in the world. This movie is getting weirder and weirder and weirder for me. After all of that, we come across the next scene of the movie. The Mind Control. The girls end up in the recording studio and get introduced to the Megasound 8000. After recording, the manager plays back the music and it showcases what the Megasound 8000 is really about. Mind control. Can we not have so many hashtag references in this movie, please? Oh, look, another 
montage during this montage they do showcase how much fame the girls are getting for example Wait. does anyone else think it's a little strange that all this happened in a week after literally getting famous within a week because that totally happens literally now these days the girls start to understand the troubles of being famous the manager announces a party in honor of josie which makes the other band members feel underappreciated um what mm -hmm. don't i get one? Oh, now that is strange well why don't you come along too there's always room for one more get it because she's below everyone apparently and she's the only one that's below everyone in this movie that doesn't seem very right to me but all right oh look more advertising fantastic is this a commercial or what is this a party i see all right boys we gotta break this party up during this so-called party we get to see fiona kiss to the girl so she can have total and complete mind control because get it hashtag Illuminati. all right all right enough with Illuminati. jokes by the way there is a weight joke in here that's very questionable oh i am starved i'm such a pig fiona is about to eat a chip but decides to call herself a pig and does not eat the one single chip it's not good even in 2001 it's not good writing it's not funny we're 54 minutes in and finally the girls are catching on that there is something terribly terribly wrong with what's going on there the manager and ceo of the record label see this and they decide to get rid of the two girls val and melody they also decide to keep josie around because she's so caught up in fame oh look another f montage every five f minutes <laughs> while val and mel go to trl oh yeah i forgot to mention that the manager of the record label hooked them up with trl to get them separated from josie they notice the set is fake man marvel should take some notes here this is a great plot this is intense the two girls then find out that they are about to get whacked bro they're about to get whacked after the girls then escape from the crutches of a conspiracy to commit murder they run to josie who had been brainwashed by her remix single the manager had given her josie ends up being a total d to her friends my talent and my credit because that happens too with fame great they now have broken up what shall we ever do i wonder if the ending of the movie is gonna have them come back together you know you just don't know about these things cue the sad f montage can we quit with the montages please just stop stop josie ends up discovering she was brainwashed and wants to know what is really going on with everything she goes to the recording studio where she then finds out after playing with some eq settings that it was all a f lie bro it's a lie music is a lie josie no longer wants to be a part of the establishment <coughs> and wants to turn the record label into the police after brainwashing the youth but fiona won't let anything get in the way of total and complete mind control josie then tries to get her friends back after realizing this was all an illusion the fame the money the fans but there's still a show to play what happens next who f knows bum, bum, bum. the jora comes back to save the day yay just kidding it was a total distraction it was a good plot twist in the movie though here the fight scene in this scene josie and the girls end up fighting fiona and wyatt to stop global and complete brainwash you know it's really crazy that even in this scene there is still so much going on but you can still see all the advertising here comes the plot twist after the girls kick some Fiona goes to pick up a guitar to end Josie, but ends up ending the Mega Sound 8000. The girls then discover what the real brainwash was about. Do I see another plot twist going on here? Fiona is the most jerking girl in the world. Everybody loves Fiona. She's got the best hair and the most awesome clothes. And she's so thin. I know I want to be just like Fiona. Is this a f Johnny Depp movie or something like damn this is really f good the plot twist was that Fiona just wanted to be liked because she was bullied 
which is really sad actually. They do end up mentioning that you should always be happy with who you are no matter what. And all this was brought up because of the whole Fiona and mind control situation. And it is true, you should be happy with who you are. No one and no thing can make you who you are. Just be happy. I mean, f it. Do you, boo. Josie and the girls end up playing a f bop. A bop. And they end up still dominating the f crowd because you better dominate with some punk rock music and tell you that right now so that's the end of the movie now is this movie terrible not really it has about three plot twists in it and that's really really interesting however they weren't spaced out correctly the plot twists were more towards the end of the film but they do set up the movie in the beginning for the plot twist at the end which is you know it does make the movie worth the watch now all the sexist jokes are really underrated and should have not been in the film where regardless of what era it was. Uh, the dumb jokes, the dumb blonde jokes are not good. I personally know a lot of females who are very successful. However, they were successful. So that's a good ending to a movie is that these women were successful at just being who they are, being pop stars, being punk rock pop stars in a sense. But this is where I'm gonna end it here. If you happen to like my content and more of these videos like this, please like, share, and subscribe. Dude, I had fun making this. It has been a long time coming. I've been away for about a month now, so I plan on doing more content like this. I love y'all. Thank you for watching.